We have tested a lot of SSDs on the channel and some of these are very, very expensive and perform very well as well. But then there are drives like these that are very, very affordable. Now, some of the specs might not look as inviting or impressive as some of the others on the paper, but don't judge the book by its cover. This is one of the best bang for buck drives that you can get. Let me show you why. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done. Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So this is the WD Blue SN5. 80. It's two terabytes in size and this is the maximum capacity. You can't get four terabytes. You can get 256, 500, one terabyte and then two terabyte version. The drive is one-sided. As you can see on the bottom, there is absolutely nothing. We've got one chip of NAND in there and the controller in here. A little sticker in the middle and that's it. This is quite a basic drive. Now, it doesn't have any DRAM cache. It uses a host memory buffer. And on the box, it says up to 4,150 megabytes per second. We all know this is sequential speed. This doesn't mean quite as much. So let's take a look at some of the benchmarks then how good is this drive? Now we've got to check out the sequential read and writes first, even though this is not necessarily the most useful way of measuring SSD speeds, we can still see like which ones are faster and does it actually match what we get on the box. This says up to 4,150 megabytes per second. I'm getting 4,336 megabytes per second read speed, which is faster than advertised. Not really impressive in terms of the big scale of things, as you can see, one of the lower end drives really. And in terms of write speeds, again, faster than advertised, 4,227 megabytes per second compared to this on the box here. Again, sequential read and write speeds, not really impressive. We're somewhere in the ballpark of Sabre Rocket 4.0 one terabyte drive that was released ages ago. Samsung 990 Evo is about the same, not really impressive, but let's take a look at quick system benchmark. So this is for secondary drive in your system, accessing small little files all over the place, but not too heavy on the SSD. So if you're looking for a secondary drive, then that's the one. I wouldn't say this is really perfect for a project drive because projects, if you're a creator, can be a little bit heavier than this quick system benchmark. If you were looking for a project drive, then perhaps look for the full system drive benchmark and drive consistency and putting something together. But quick system benchmark, look at that. Suddenly we're not in the bottom anymore. We're right in the middle of the pack. We're only a tiny bit slower than the Lexer NM800 Pro, which is a much more expensive drive. As you can see there, here it is. This one has DRAM cache as well. We don't, but we're still performing identical to that one. Now it's not quite as good as some of the high-end Gen 4 drives. As you can see, there is a little bit of a gap between the FiQ to 530 and Lexer NM800 Pro. But I think for a secondary drive, it's quite a good benchmark here. Now, data drive, suddenly we're traveling actually even further up in this scale. And suddenly we're very much identical to the SN770. So data drive benchmark is where we more storing data, maybe loading onto it and then reading from it but it's not like reading a lot of little files all over the place. It's more like a data drive benchmark for storing the data and so on. So it's performing very, very well in here. And in fact, some of the high-end drives, for example, the WD Black SN850X is slower than this drive here, which is mighty impressive. Looking at the full system drive benchmark, so that is where your operating system and programs run on and shows if you want to use this drive for that purpose, then how good is the drive? We're kind of in the middle of the pack, a little bit lower, but as you can see, there is not that big of a difference between this SN580 and the Kingston KC3000, which is a lot more expensive drive, but is about 7%, maybe 5% faster drive. So in terms of full system benchmark, it's very impressive. Lexer NM790 has a better sequential read and write speed, but within a couple of percent of this drive, as you can see, the price per terabyte is a little bit more affordable on the SN580. Now, some of the best Gen 4 drives like the Samsung 990 EVO, 990 Pro or Solidime P44 Pro are 10 to 15% faster than this guy here. But 
probably more than 10 to 15 percent more expensive as well so this one looks quite impressive actually now looking at the drive consistency test so this is where we're absolutely hammering the drive very very heavily for 20 hours straight we're writing over 20 terabytes of data on it filling the drive multiple times and seeing here actually this drive doesn't perform very well at all in fact it's one of the lower end drives that we've tested solid imp 41 plus two terabyte one performs actually better in here a couple of percent better and this is kind of a lower end here so if you're looking for very heavy ssd use then this guy here with the control and host memory buffer and two terabytes in size doesn't really work so well if you're looking for a good consistency then you're probably looking for a dram cache drive and some of the high-end gen 4 drives which you can see further up in this pack now we've also got to talk about the terabyte written spec as always the drives all of them have five-year warranty or a terabyte written spec which is basically like years warranty or mileage what you get in the car so the mileage that you can get with this one is 600 terabytes per one terabyte and the lower end capacity is 500 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes they are in linear relationship with this so half of the terabyte written specs on the 500 gigabytes compared to this one terabyte one but the two terabyte one actually doesn't scale linearly linearly in terms of terabyte written spec it is 900 terabytes written per two terabytes which is 25 percent less than what samsung and some of the higher end was the digital sn770 or sn850x offer so that's a bit of a shame because the two terabyte one is very affordable but yet the terabyte written spec is not very impressive or is actually below the industry standard what we can see there this costs roughly around 65 dollars per terabyte the two terabyte version is even cheaper per terabyte around 60 dollars per terabyte i highly recommend checking out the pricing of this drive and the rest of the drive all that are showed in this video in the description below because often there's deals on certain drives and then i highly recommend going with this one right now there's a lot of deals going on so check out the latest pricing in the description below but in conclusion I think this SN580 is a very impressive drive. For the amount of money that you pay for this, it actually trumps the Solidime P41 Plus, which is more expensive, yet actually performs not as good as this SN580. So I'm liking what WD is doing here, how affordable this is, and I think this is one of the best bang for buck SSDs that you can get. If you just want the best performance for your money, I mean, it's hard to beat this one. I'd love to know which one you would go for, but I think this is very impressive. Hit that like button. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you haven't already. Links below if you want to check it out. Thanks guys for watching. Bye bye.